this video, we will talk about how prokaryotic ribosomes differ from eukaryotic ribosomes. And then we'll talk a little bit about why that is important. Before we begin, let's remind ourselves that ribosomes are organelles that are responsible for making protein. Ribosomes are made up of RNA and proteins, and each ribosome has two separate RNA protein complexes, known as the small and large subunits. So as you can see here, this is the large subunit, this is a small subunit. Large subunit, small subunit over here. I like to think of them as pretty much a burger bun, since that's pretty much what it looks like. The large subunit is on top of the small subunit, and the mRNA is being translated in the middle of the ribosomes, between the burger buns, essentially. So if there were an mRNA, it would go right out here, and then you can kind of think of it as like the meat of the burger is the mRNA. Something to mention is that eukaryotic ribosomes may be either free, meaning that they're floating around in the cytoplasm, or they may be bound, meaning that they're attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum or outside the nuclear envelope. If you're interested in learning about bound ribosomes, I will link the video to it right here. So we have a video about bound ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now let's go back to ribosomes. Some cells will need to make more protein than others, and eukaryotic cells that specialize in producing proteins will have a larger number of ribosomes, and that makes sense. For example, the pancreas is responsible for producing and secreting large amounts of digestive enzymes, so the pancreatic cells that make these enzymes have a large number of ribosomes. Now let's get into how eukaryotes and prokaryotes differ in their ribosomes. As you may have seen here, eukaryotes have a 40S subunit down here and a 60S subunit over here, which eventually make up an 80S ribosome. The S represents the sedimentation coefficients, which is pretty much just a measure of how big the ribosome or the subunit is. Now prokaryotes over here have a 30S subunit and a 50S subunit, which eventually makes up a 70S ribosome. Therefore, our ribosomes, as you can see, are different from prokaryotic ribosomes. This is really important for antibiotics. So now we can take a look over here. There are certain antibiotics that work on the 50S subunit. So let's take a look over here to the 50S subunit. Some examples of antibiotics that work on the 50S subunit include azithromycin, erythromycin, clindamycin, lenizolid, and chloramphenicol. Other antibiotics work on the 30S subunit over there. Those antibiotics include neomycin, gentamicin, doxycycline, tetracycline, and tobramycin, to name a few. So you don't have to memorize all of that. That was just to show you why it's important for us to know that prokaryotes and eukaryotes have different ribosomes. Therefore, you can see that we can exploit these differences in ribosomes with certain antibiotics, and that's why it's important that prokaryotic ribosomes differ from eukaryotic ribosomes. On the other hand, fungi have ADS ribosomes just like we do. Therefore, we are unable to use the differences in ribosomes to make antifungals, and this can make it harder to treat fungal infections sometimes. So now let's sum up the important facts of this video. Prokaryotic ribosomes differ from eukaryotic ribosomes. Prokaryotes have a 70S ribosome made up of a 30S small subunit and a 50S large subunit. Eukaryotes have an 80S ribosome made up of a 40S subunit and a 60S subunit. We can use these differences in ribosomes when using antibiotics, which target 30S and 50S subunits and don't affect our ribosomes. So thank you for watching this video, and if you got this far, please give this video a like. Comment below with questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video.